Senator Croce. Mr. President. Mr. President, I, I rise today to support the nomination of Mr. Michael Garcia. It's so it's refreshing, quite frankly, to read a, a lifetime of service to the United States and, and see that individual come back to his home in New York and, and want to serve the, the residents and the people of New York again. It, it is indeed refreshing, given his vast experience. As we look to the issues that are going to be facing our legislative session this year, the security of America and New Yorkers and the legitimacy of our government and institutions in the form of ethics reform are going to be topics. Mr. Garcia's life represents a truly an in-depth knowledge of both of those areas. I'd like to draw specific attention, Mr. President, to his work in the United States Attorney's Office. You know, in 1992 and 93, when our enemies overseas decided that they would declare war on the United States, the first battles in that war were in Lower Manhattan at the World Trade Center and in places like Kenya and Tanzania and then later the USS Cole, Cobar Towers. But the first battles were fought in the courtroom and the United States Attorney's Office and Mr. Michael Garcia were on the front lines at that point. So much of what we learned as an intelligence community to fight the global war on terror in the years subsequent were gleaned from the information that that U.S. Attorney's Office and that man sitting in the balcony was able to get. And we're still using it today. Some of the information that we were able to take from those open court cases in the American judicial system are still being used today to put together the network. Ramzi Youssef, Omar Abdurrahman. These are individuals involved in those attacks that later went on to lead a larger network, and we all know what happened on September 11, 2001. So when I look uh, to the balcony, uh, I don't see a great lawyer or a great prosecutor. I see a great patriot. And everyone in this chamber today is safer as an American because of that man and the fine work of the career prosecutors at the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District. So, Mr. President, um, I have to compliment Governor Cuomo. Regardless of criticism or recommendations, the governor has made an outstanding choice, not only as a governor, um, but as an American. And we are nominating and confirming to the bench today a great patriot, and I'm sure will be a great jurist for the state of New York. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Croce. We want to, we'd like to welcome the nominee as well as Sophia and Michael to the chamber today. The question will be on the nomination of Michael Garcia as Associate Judge of the New York State Court of Appeals. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Senator Avella, why do you rise? Thank you, Mr. President. And I wish to be recorded as abstaining from the vote on the nominee. I am the lead plaintiff in a suit against the city of New York which we won at the appellate division, but some of the defendants are appealing to the Court of Appeals. And since this nominee will be hearing the case, I think it's appropriate to abstain from the vote. Without objection and, with, and in accordance with Rule 10, your objection is so designated and so noted. The, the abstention is so designated and so noted. <laughs> The nomination of Michael Garcia as Associate Justice of the New York State Court of Appeals is hereby confirmed and approved. Congratulations, Judge Garcia. Senator Francisco. An immediate meeting of the Rules Committee and Senate uh, in the room 332.
There will be an immediate meeting of the Senate Rules Committee in room 332. An immediate meeting of the Senate Rules Committee in room 332. The Senate will stand at ease.
Let's go. Uh, yes. Uh... Senate will return to order. Uh, at this point in time, uh, could we return to reports of standing committees for a report of the Rules Committee? There is a Rules Committee report before the desk, and the Secretary will read. Senator Flanagan from the Committee on Rules reports the following bills. Senate Print 932A by Senator Avella, an act amend the public housing law. Senate 3969 by Senator Ranzenhofer, an act amend the private housing finance law. Senate 4558A by Senator Klein, an act amend the public housing law. Senate 6694 by Senator Seward, an act amend the insurance law. Senate 6695 by Senator Montgomery, an act amend the corrections law. Senate 6699 by Senator Perkins, an act amend the administrative code of the city of New York. Senate 6706 by Senator Ritchie, an act amend the tax law. And Senate 6707 by Senator Ritchie, an act amend the tax law. All bills reported direct to third reading. Senator DeFrancisco, would you like to make a motion? Uh, I move that you accept the uh, report of the Rules Committee. All in favor of accepting the Committee on Rules Report signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the Committee on Rules Report has been accepted. Now can we uh, you now uh, take up the non-controversial reading of uh, the uh, calendar for today. Secretary will begin the reading of today's active list, February 8, 2016. Secretary will read. Calendar number 10 by Senator Farley, Senate Print 6379A, an act amend the Business Corporation Law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect in the same date and same manner as Chapter of the Laws of 2015. Call the roll. Adabo, Flynn, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Ayes 54. Bill is passed. Calendar number 11 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 6380A, an act amend the Corrections Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect in the same date and same manner as Chapter of the Laws of 2015. Call the roll. Adabo, Flan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Senator Carlucci to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Our correctional officers have one of the hardest jobs there is. Uh, the beat that they walk is one of the toughest beats in the nation. And we know that right now in New York State, we have over 8,500 inmates that have been formally diagnosed with some form of mental health disorder. Uh, given those facts, and we know that there's far more that have, are living with mental illness in our correctional facilities, but have just been undiagnosed. That's why it's so important that our correctional officers have the tools, have the resources they need to do their job successfully. Uh, what this legislation does is requires correctional officers to have mental health training. Uh, they'll be able to have the training to develop the skills to uh, de-escalate situations. Uh, they'll be able to develop the skills to see the signs uh, in inmates, uh, to see that they might be needing of treatment. Uh, by passing this legislation, I believe we'll be making our prisons safer and making strides towards reducing the recidivism rate here in New York State. So I want to thank my colleagues for supporting this important legislation. And, Mr. President, I'll be voting in the affirmative. Thank you. Senator Carlucci, to be recorded in the affirmative, announce the results. Aye, 54. And the bill is passed. Gallon number 12 by Senator Little, Senate Print 6381B, an act to repeal certain provisions. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect in the same date and same manner as Chapter of the Laws of 2015. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Aye, 54. Bill is passed. Calendar number 15 by Senator Amador, Senate Print 6384A, an act amend the social services law. Read the last section. Section 4 of the statute take effect in the same date and same manner as the chapter of the laws of 2015. Call the roll. Adabo, Flynn, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 54. Bill is passed. Calendar number 20 by Senator Felder, Senate Print 6389A, an act amend the Family Court Act. Last section. Section 3 is asked to take effect in the same date and same manner as the Chapter of Laws of 2015. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Jung. Ayes 54. Bill is passed. Calendar number 25 by Senator Ranzenhofer, Senate Print 6394A. And act amend the public authorities law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect in the same date and same manner as the chapter of the laws of 2015. Call the roll. Adabo, Flan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 54. Bills passed. Calendar number 29 by Senator Seward, Senate Print 6398A. And act to amend the chapter of the laws of 2015. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect in the same date and same manner as the chapter of the laws of 2015. Call the roll. Adabo, Flan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 54. Bills passed. 
Calendar number 37 by Senator Serrano, Senate Print 6426A, Enactment Chapter 899, the Laws of 1984. Read the last section. Section 4, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flan and Klein Stewart Cousin Jung. Ayes 54. The bill is passed. Senator DeFrancisco, that completes the non controversial reading of today's active list calendar. Uh, yes. Would you please uh, recognize Senator uh, Hassel Thompson, who is uh, for the purposes of an introduction? Senator Hassel Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to introduce a, a young woman into our chambers today who originated in the state of Alabama and who, before Rosa Parks, refused to get up as a civil rights act of disobedience um, on a bus in Alabama. Hopefully, one day we'll do a resolution on behalf of Ms. Colvin, but she is here um, being honored by a group of students who are part of a group called Peace December. It's a group that I began, and 15 years later, that group is, originates in 15 countries across the world. Um, peace December is really about bringing peace and order um, to any system that segregates against its citizens. And so she has been such a prime example of what it means to be a peaceful demonstrator but determined as an A student and a, and a woman who one day wanted to be president. But I know that even though she did not make it, she is so proud of our president. And she, we are so proud of her for all of the initiatives and the things that she has done and for the role modeling that she does for our young people. So I just wanted to ask my colleagues to just recognize her with me today, welcome her to the chambers in the New York State Senate, and let her know that we appreciate all that she has sacrificed being arrested, being handcuffed, being in prison, and being tormented just because she was a woman of color. Thank you, Ms. Colvin, for all that you have done for us. Thank you, Ms. Colvin. We uh, welcome you and extend the privileges and courtesies of the House. Thank you for being here. Senator DeFrancisco, Senator Diaz has asked permission to speak without objection. <coughs> Senator Diaz. Oh, was nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, but I raised my hand before you cut me off. Uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Look like a conductor there, Senator Diaz. Today, today I have to join my colleague, Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson in honoring the, uh, the person of Claudette Colby. Here in the, in, the, in the Senate chamber, in the Senate floor, we have a uh, few distinguished members of the community. We have Lisa Allen, director of the Peace December movement. We have Edna Thomas Granger, executive director of the Peace uh, December and Sheikh Drummond, Chairman of the Peace December. So also they are joining and they they, they came with uh, Miss Colvin today with Claudette. So thank you for being here today. In chamber in the in the in the gallery, we have a group of also of distinguished members of the community. We have uh, Sherina Drummond, the wife of uh, Sheikh Drummond, and member of the committee. So I also would like to uh, extend my welcoming to you, uh, and thank you for being in Albany today and, and bringing Ms. Claude uh, Colvin to us. Mr. Chairman, ladies and thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Two years ago, two years ago on February 21, 2014. I, every year I do something in the Bronx called the abrazos, called the embraces. 
We have Abrazo Boricua, that call an embrace for the Puerto Rican community. We have Abrazo Dominicano for the Dominican community. We have Abrazo eh, Hondureño for, the, for the, the Honduran. And also we have Abrazo eh, Bangladesh. In one of those abrazos two years ago, uh, Ms. Uh, Beverly Roberts, Beverly Roberts, ladies and gentlemen, is the president of the NAACP, the Parchester branch in the Bronx. So Ms. Beverly Roberts brought to us the person of Claudette Colvin, that's two years ago, and informed me of the outstanding, the exemplary Sample and all the the the, the thing that Ms. Claude Corbin did on those times, and and even though other people have been widely recognized and widely applauded, Ms. Corbin, uh, Ms. Claude, Ms. Claudie Colvin uh, has been in the back seat taking uh, time, and everybody is taking uh, recognition. But today, this chamber. Thanks to Ruth Hasso Tonzo, we here, I'm here, we did it in the Bronx two years ago, in the Abrazo Afro-Americano. But today, Ms. Corbett, Ms. Corbett, thank you for all your effort. I remember I went, to, I went to Columbia, South Carolina in 1960. 1960, a young guy, 18 years old from Puerto Rico, don't, didn't know anything. And I joined the Army, and I went to Columbia, to Fort Jackson, Columbia, South Carolina, and I knew and I learned what was going on that, in that time. And, and I am knowing what you did. Thank you. We, are, we all appreciate that because of what you did. Other people follow you. And here, here we are. Here we are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We uh, welcome our guests and extend our best wishes to everyone. Senator DeFrancisco. Yes, are there, is there any further business at the desk? There is no further business before that, the desk. That being, case, I, case I, that being the case, I move to adjourn until Tuesday, February 9 at 11 a.m. Senate will stand adjourned on motion until Tuesday, February 9th at 11 a.m. Senate is adjourned.